So it looks like Emmy Krunkowski is already ready. Emmy, as you probably know, was our guest speaker last year, and she was amazing. You probably remember her, and I know that many people who came back to the event was asking me if Emmy will be today. And there she is. Emmy has coached clients from a wide variety of organizations, including Abbott, Ion, JCPenney, McDonald's, and PepsiCo. So right now she will be coaching us. Well, first of all, good morning. Um, I'm going to do my best to not move around a lot because this is being videotaped. It's high tech this year, isn't it? All these lights and stuff, it's great. Um, first of all, I want to say uh, good morning and welcome. And I'm going to actually be doing kind of more of a workshop. And I'd actually really personally like to get all of you involved in this. Because I think that one of the best ways to take, to, to be in a, at a conference is to, is to take something home that you yourself have had a personal experience with. So I'm going to do my best to try to invite you into that. So I'm kind of going to be giving a bit of a talk, but also a workshop. And if you aren't sitting at a table that has some paper and other humans sitting there, other lovely people <laughs> sitting there. I just want to encourage you to go find a seat in a table somewhere so that you can be part of it, okay? All right. I feel like I'm back in high school where I was in theater and those lights, <laughs> it's kind of amazing. So, and Julia, my awesome partner here, is going to be moving my slides for me. So. Um, so let's get started with the first one. And I wanted to start with, um, actually, my title was Unlocking Your, your Dreams. What did my title say again? You want to go? <laughs> Unlock the key to living out your dreams. This morning, I just wanted to comment quickly before I go to that. I was listening to some of the things that I heard some of the other women say. Julia said, she said yes to what she valued. She made a big decision and said yes and made a huge choice. And Lori said she accepted the challenge and said, I'm going to show you all that I can absolutely show up. And um, so just watch. Watch me. <laughs> and Magna, it sounded like you said you rose to the call to provide a story when you didn't know you had to do one at the time, but you rose to the call anyway, and that started you off. Now, I want to say this quickly because I want to tell you a story. This is, this is actually me when I was six years old. And that's me in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where I was born and raised. And I was adopted into the Polish community because I was adopted at age uh, about three weeks. And that's my brother, Tom, who you can't see hunkered down on his big wheel. He and I were both adopted by my parents, Eugene Krumkowski, and my mom, Ruthann Shannon Krumkowski. Um, who were two awesome individuals who said they wanted a bigger family and they didn't necessarily need the kids to look like them. And so they opened up their homes and their hearts and said, come on in. So, so this is me at age six, and you'll notice that there's a, a part of a bike that's sort of over here on the right, and that's my bike. Now this is kind of, I'm not sure if this is the best story, but my talk today is actually going to be about something that actually affects every one of us, which has to do with the way we think and how our thoughts can sometimes get in the way of our greatness, because we all have it. Every one of you right here already is enough just because you're here right now. So just know that. I know that sounds very coachy, but it's really true, <laughs> okay? And when I was about six years old, we moved to this block, and I was r going through some photos, and I thought this might be an interesting story to tell because it's very true and personal of me. You see me standing here on this stage, but I have not always believed in my capacity. And in fact, when I was six years old, my brother Tom and I, who were actually six weeks apart, so we are not biologically related, my parents adopted two children at the same time, coming from different homes, and they sort of raised us like twins. You can see that I'm social, I'm external, I'm relational. That's not my brother, okay? He's kind of the opposite. He's kind of 
introverted. Well, he's a little better now, but he's very analytical, very smart, very cognitive oriented. And as a young, you know, brown girl growing up in this family where pretty much nobody looks like me and I don't look like them, but my family loves me. Um, when you're in school, what do we reward in Western school? We reward cognitive ability, right? being analytical, smart, and this and that, not necessarily miss social person, this and that. So I say this to say that I used to compete a lot with my brother. I actually looked to him as kind of almost like, I don't think I'm as good as he is because he's really smart, he's doing really well, we went to a Catholic school, and I, this story came up because the bike you see on the picture is my bike, but for a good while there, I had training wheels on my bike. <laughs> now, my brother is super mechanical. And one day, I came home from school, and that was my bike. Sands the training wheels. So I was really mad at my brother that he didn't tell me what he was going to do, that he was going to take my training wheels off my bike without asking me for it or asking my permission. But more importantly, I immediately froze, meaning I immediately assumed that I could not ride my bike. Like, I got on it, and I tried it, and I fell down, and I hurt myself, and I said, I don't have a bike. And so my whole, like, world shifted inside of me because I believed or thought that I was not going to be able to ride my bike. Now, is this an amazing story? No, but it's amazing in that that one action literally changed the perception that I had of myself, my capabilities, what I could do. And this is something that we learn very young, at, at a very young age, which is we have messages, next, <laughs> called that critical inner voice. How many of you know a little bit about what I'm talking about? Just raise your hand. I should not see one hand not go up, because oh my god, if not, you're amazing. Okay. That critical little inner voice that tells us what? Can't do it. What else does it tell us? Not good enough. Can you go to the next slide? Yeah. Right. Not good enough. And there's more coming. Um, but stay there. <laughs> um, so I, I, brought, I actually brought up the picture from childhood because these messages that we get can actually start when we're very small. In fact, some of you that may be parents may not even be thinking about the comments or statements or things or behaviors that you do and how it impacts the small people that are watching you every day, right? And then there's things like our teachers. Uh, we're all unique beings. We have different attributes, different qualities. And we listen. I think you said, listen more, talk less, right? We listen, and when we listen, we internalize messages, and especially the negative ones, because it's kind of like this little voice saying, you're not good enough. Next one. And see, my list is getting longer, right? I kind of did that on purpose. Because as we begin to internalize negative messages about ourselves or who we are, or the beliefs that we have about ourselves, this doesn't just kind of stop. It kind of keeps going. And we start to develop very self-defeating thoughts about who we are or beliefs about ourselves, such as, I believed because the training wheels were off the bike that I was never going to learn how to ride the bike. I sort of went to the complete opposite of the spectrum. And I will tell you, for about a good week, I just kind of said, well, I guess I'll just play with my Barbies. <laughs> I guess I'll just, I had that Barbie head that had the hair, and I used to do stuff there, right? I stayed in the house. I didn't play with my friends. And it wasn't until, and this is what I kind of love about my brother, is my brother always, because we were different and because he, he, I saw him as somebody that I wanted to be as good as, so it was kind of a weird sort of motivation, I decided that I was going to ride my bike. And eventually I did get back on my bike and I did ride it. But the point is, is that for a good week of my life, one whole week, I didn't believe that I could do it. And then when I tried it and I failed, I didn't keep going. I didn't push through that. So why am I saying that? I'm saying that when we begin to internalize messages about ourselves and we begin to believe them and we will believe them, and please don't think that this stops at any one moment. This is going to be something that is going to be with you 
till your very, uh, at your very last final days, as my mom would say, right? That thoughts enter in and out of our mind more than you would think. I want to show you a stat in a little bit about that. And that we are constantly, constantly thinking. So that eventually, if we think it, we believe it, and if we believe it, we do what? We behave or act it out, right? And it can stop us like a crutch. It can be a true barrier. And I wanted to bring up this topic. I'm actually really glad the two of you went before I did because amazing examples of success, but it's not like it's that easy to get to, right? There's often these hidden barriers that absolutely get in our way and they can be quite insidious, and that is your inner crit critic that thinks it's helping you out by protecting you and keeping you safe, right? Like, no, Amy, you're not gonna ride that bike and you're not gonna be good at that anyway. But the reality was is that meant I was stuck. And last but not least, when we kind of continue to hang out in this space, because we internalize these things and we're looking through our lens, then I think it can absolutely impact how we then see the world and see other people and we start noticing things that are wrong with people or different about people. And oh, look at that. Look, what do you think she was thinking? Right? This happens. Next slide. So does the, do these sound familiar? Do these look familiar? Yes. Right? I must be perfect, I'm not good enough, I must not make a mistake. Perfectionists, how many perfectionists do we have in the room? Yeah, oh yeah, look at the hands, go, go, go! Right? Okay. Now here's the thing. Next slide. I wanna have some fun and I, remember I said when I started I don't wanna be hogging the mic all the time, although I'm hogging it a little bit right now. I would like very much, all of you have Paper, you should have some pads of paper, and if you don't, there's tables that do, because I can see them. Um, here's what I want. I want to set this scenario up. I want you to honestly think about what time you got up today, and I want you to play back in your mind sort of key moments that you were having, like you got up, you went to the restroom, you took a shower, Maybe you fed yourself, maybe you had to feed someone else, maybe you got a phone call, maybe you had to take the dog out. Um, then you had to think about, oh gosh, what time? Oh, now I gotta think about what I'm wearing. How many people thought about trying a few outfits? Did you try a couple, right? Oh, oh, that makes me look this way, whatever, right? Oh God, then you came here and you ran into somebody you saw and you started comparing yourself. Oh wow, her shoes are so much better looking than mine. Blah, 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 right? This is what happens. So here's what I want you to do on your pieces of paper. I want you to make a little line down the middle, and I want you to write a plus and a minus, and I just want you to think about, can you come up with at least three phrases, words, ideas, thoughts that you had about yourself or something this morning that either goes in the negative side or the judgmental side or whatever you want to call that, and then the positive. So take a second. Take a, take a minute to do that. And then we're going to engage you in some group conversation in a second here, okay? One minute. I'm going to get my phone and time you. And I really want you to push yourself to think about it. Like, it could be the person who cut you off as you were driving here, right? Or, the, or that person at the coffee shop that took too long to make your latte, whatever it was. Three things in each category. I know that there are some tables that are even or odd. I want you to get in groups of either two, ideally two, pairs. So you and another person are gonna take, we're gonna take five minutes, and what we're gonna do is have one person share, and the other one listens, and you just listen. You don't comment like, oh yeah, oh I get it. Mm -hmm. You no, no commenting, just listening, because I want you to witness the truth 
of the reality of the human being, the beautiful person, the unique individual who's actually telling you what she or he experienced today, okay? And so what we're gonna do, and I'll time it, we're two minutes each, so I want you to find one other person, ideally at your table, and if you run out, just maybe find someone else who's done this exercise, and, I want, and we're gonna start with one person goes, the person with the longest hair goes first. The person with the longest hair goes first. Notice why I did that, right? <laughs> okay, so find your person. Everybody has to do this. You're here in the conference. I have your full attention. You have a person? Okay. All right, and okay, so one second, one second. Okay, so we're gonna start. I'm timing you now. The first person with the longest hair goes first. Okay, now I want you to switch. So the person who hasn't had a chance to talk, I'd like you to switch. Attention, attention. <laughs> this is always the best part. Just switch, switch. Just do your best and switch. I'm gonna guess that you're hearing me. Okay, so 10 more seconds, 10 more seconds, and I want you to bring it to a close. 10 more seconds, maybe five, one. Okay, okay, attention. May I have your please kind attention? Wow, this is, I don't, I. I know, um, I knew that this would happen, I knew this would happen. Okay, okay, all right, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, cats and dogs, present exists, not holes in you. Okay, okay, I got your attention, all right. Now this is okay, this is great. This is exactly why I said to Margaret, I wanna speak more voices into the room. Yes, Margaret, I see you back there, yeah, right? So here's what I wanna do, because I, I know we're on a timeline and I'm not, done with my presentation, but I would like to have, let's just maybe start with three, three shares. So what I want is uh, um, to have a, a, do a, a, di a dyad or two people uh, from a table, so maybe from three tables, we'll just pick it, who just want to share a real quick snippet about what that was like, okay? Just really quick, like whatever you want to say, as long as it's appropriate, obviously, for this forum, right? But I would love to just get a couple shares. So just, would someone like to share? Okay, and I'm going to give you the mic because I want to make sure, I do have to go and give her the mic, make sure that everyone hears you. Okay. okay. Now, the only share I want to do is the partner that I had, it was amazing how similar we had of our positives and our negatives. It's like, you know, I went through it, she went through it, it's like, oh my goodness, we're the same. You know, and I think most of us might have found that, yeah, that's what we worry about. 
Nice. So you found a compadre in, in your journey. Yeah. And I, and I realize, and don't worry, I, I do realize this is sensitive information. <laughs> I, I agree. You're, you're revealing your deepest, darkest. I don't want you getting up like you're on the Oprah show and start talking about what's going on. You're right. So that very good. But lovely to hear. Um, and here's a quick question. Did you notice either area having more or less, or were they about the same? I know I asked you for three, but did you notice anything? Next slide. Did you notice anything about the numbers of where, uh, how many things you rec remembered in one section or the other, meaning the plus or the minus? This is just a curiosity question. Okay. You notice more. Did you notice if you had more examples of negative or positive, or did it, was it about the same? And this is just asking. About the same. Okay. Okay. I see a hand over there. Okay, so what I heard her share is that her positives were kind of high level, loosey, airy, broad. It's a sunny day. Oh, I'm so glad the sun's out. How lovely. And then the negatives were maybe more personal even maybe. Like, wow, what are you, you're, you're going to be late. That was my thing. I had to take, I had to drive here from Milwaukee this morning. I, I already left late. I had to get gas and I was already going at it with myself, my little sword going boop, 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 boop. You know, like, please don't, you know, have a flat tire. Then you'd really be a loser, because what's Margaret going to do at 11.15? <laughs> okay. Okay. So, I woke up at 6 a.m. I was not supposed to. I woke up at 6 a.m. I was not supposed to. My husband forgot to turn off his alarm. So, yeah, my man racket right there. Um, but then at 8 a.m., my children walked me out the door, and they told me they loved me. And I said, oh, my gosh, I'm such a great mom. My husband's still sleeping, by the way, at that time. And then I'm sitting here listening to these wonderful women share, and there's a man in the back of the room talking over us. And all I could hear was that man in the back of the room talking. And none of us stood up and said, hey, listen, dude, this is a woman's conference. Go, go talk somewhere else. You know? So, Yeah. So it sounds like you talked about having both negative thoughts, judgmental thoughts, for sure, right? Super judgmental. And positive thoughts, right? Okay, and then your children rem reminding you of that they love you. Yeah. So what a nice counterbalance, right? That positive little jolt, right? And from boys, wow, that's even, even better, right? That's even better. Okay. All right. Next. Okay. Here's my little bit of data, <laughs> which I thought is fascinating. The National Science Foundation published an article in 2005 saying that the average person has between 12,000 and 60,000 thoughts a day. Now, just... Stop for a second and think about that. You know, how many people in this room do meditation? Right? Mindfulness practices? One of the first objectives when you sit down on that chair or on that pillow is to do what? Quiet your mind. That's because we have thousands of thoughts rifling through our beautiful brains. <laughs> I'll just say that. I'm not a scientist. But here's what really freaked me out was the, of those thoughts, 80% are negative. That's huge if you think about that, right? And 95% are exactly the same repetitive thoughts as the day before, which is kind of an interesting thought, because when I read that, I thought, that's why when I'm mad at something, when I go to bed and I wake up the next morning and I'm still mad, that's probably why. I'm repeating the journey of my mind into my, literally my next day. I wake up, oh, I can't believe that happened, right? Here's my question to all of you, and you don't have to necessarily raise your hand. I'm curious because when I saw this stat, 
I thought for sure, like, what does that say about our mindset throughout the day, our day-to-day -day life, right? If an overabundance of what we think about is not necessarily positive. And the thing is, is it's not necessarily going to be a very, uh, this is not necessarily something that's even in our awareness. It's probably happening a lot in our subconscious, right? But how many people here, did you notice any difference in terms of the numbers? Did you see that you recalled more negative versus positive? No, not for real, that, just not to make me happy because then it like, make, okay, yeah, okay. And like, isn't that interesting, right? But then you read this and you think like, wow. So what I really thought about, and this is why I was thinking about this talk, is because probably before you can take a journey, before you can achieve a goal, before you can set a vision, you have to have the mindset, the right mindset. Next slide. Because we become what we think about. I saw this quote when I was preparing this talk and I thought, I love that. We become what we think about. So what are you thinking about? What are you consciously aware of? And what's actually operating behind that? Now there's where the psychotherapists and the psychologists and all my healing people come into play, because that's their job. <laughs> but the point that I want to make here is that when you think about pursuing your dreams, pursuing your goals, right? Moving past, making big decisions like, I'm going to say yes to me. You have to have full alignment to do that. And that starts up here. And it literally moves here to the heart. And then it moves to our body. You have three centers of intelligence, right? And ideally, the integrated human being is operating on all cylinders all the time where they're all integrated. But our minds, we saw that statistic. The amount of thoughts, ideas, words, whatever you want to call that, that is rifling through our brains on a pretty much of a daily basis, it's, it's very busy and it's very easy to be unaware of it. To be unaware of the unconscious messages that you either are sending to yourself or that when you look out in the world and you watch the news and you see all the horrible news stories, what happens? It absolutely has an impact on what we think and how we feel and then how we operate out in the world, okay? So I thought that what I love about this is this transcends all beings because we are all human beings and we all walk this planet and we all have our own subjective perception of reality, right? But all of us are great beings, but we probably don't always think that way, at least not based on what the National Science Foundation said in 2005. Kind of. So, next slide. How many of you know Louise Hay? A few hands. Okay. So Louise Hay, and I'm, I'm only going to give a cursor here. So Louise Hay, born in 1926, your average person, had a, had a life where she had an upbringing and she had some hardships. It sounded like she was dealing with some things like domestic violence and other things like that. And then in the late 70s, she was diagnosed with an irreversible diagnosis of irreversible cervical cancer. Irreversible was the word they used when I was reading this. And I thought, wow, imagine you go to you see your doctor and they say, you have an irreversible condition. What would you, where would your mind go? Right, how many more days on the planet do I have, right? I'm now I have to plan that out, right? Absolutely. So what was amazing about Louise Hay is that she made a conscious decision to say, I'm going to start living my life in an alternative way. And I'm going to start doing things like visualization. And I'm going to talk with people who want to help people improve their minds and the way they think and the way they see the world. And they get psychotherapy. She, I think she also went to see some psychotherapists. Therapists, that's okay. Therapists are our friends, everybody. <laughs> Therapists are our friends. Coaches, we're your friends, right? I love this. The thoughts we choose to think 
are the tools we use to paint the canvas of our lives. So that if we become our thoughts, the first thing we have to do is become aware of them, which is why I wanted all of you to do that exercise today. And then I wanted you to actually speak it out into the room to another person so you could acknowledge your awareness of you and the way you're thinking, both pleasant and maybe unpleasant. Or, or another way of saying it is the messages that are encouraging and the discouraging messages. Because it's the discouraging messages that actually keep us stuck. And, and you're not necessarily telling anybody about that. It's just happening, right, automatically. Next slide. And the science agrees with Louise Hay that positive affirmations will transform our mindset. Meaning you will never be in control fully of those thoughts, those 60,000 plus thoughts that are going through you and ex you're having an experience of on a daily basis. But affirmations might be the key. Remember my title, the unlock the key? <laughs> positive affirmations are phrases that are inherently designed to be positive. They're statements really, and they are often created and I'll give you a little bit of info on how to do that because you're going to do that before you leave. And they are repeated for a reason. Because why? Why would we need to repeat positive affirmations on a regular basis to actually counteract or challenge those unhelpful thoughts that we're having? What do you think? Creating a habit of positive thinking, yes. And also because of the number of thoughts that we have on a regular basis over rides, right, our mind, and we saw a statistic that suggested that 80% of those are negative. In fact, I've heard the phrase, our brains are wired to think negative, and I think that's what they mean. So you have to actually be intentional about generating and saying out loud, having it in your bathroom mirror. If anybody ever came to my place, you'd see I have positive affirmations littered around my apartment, in my mirror, in my car. I brought one with me right here, okay? I told my mother I made it here. She sent me one. She's a minister, okay? So I want to talk about what, what are they? Can you turn to the next slide? So these phrases that we may not even realize we're experiencing and having in our minds and in our lives and in our bodies could be altered by, next, that. I dwell on positive thoughts. I'm choosing to dwell on them. I'm going to make a conscious effort to actually not only be aware, but I'm going to note them. I'm going to mentally note them, and I'm going to even say this to myself out loud 50 times a day. I'm now, I don't know that I read anything. I'm sure there's something in the research that says how often, but this is one example. Can you go to the next one? Or what about this? I handle my own life with joy and ease. When I found out Julia was going to help me with being able to manually click to the next slide, I just said, ah, oh, thank you, right? because she's now my partner, and I can take on a presence of ease, because life is a roller coaster, right? Next slide. Or maybe this one. I'm willing to learn something new every day. Willing, to me, is the operative word here, right? Because Realistically, as human beings, we are learning every day, but are we willing to see the opportunity for learning? Often in times of conflict, there is an opportunity to learn. It's hard, though, when you're in a conflict to know whether to be mad and stay mad <laughs> or to see beyond the moment to say, you know what, what's the lesson here? How can I learn from this? So I am willing to learn something new every day. This is an excellent affirmation for anybody who's going through a transition. I work as a, an executive coach. I work with people when they are leaving a company, leaving a job, and probably one of the biggest things that I tell them right in the beginning is, 
take on a mindset of learning agility. You're going to be doing something you've never done before. You're going to make mistakes, and that's part of it. And if you can take on this, it can bring you greater joy and ease. Next one. Or what about this one? I'm willing to see my magnificence. I love this um, particular affirmation because how many of us wake up in the morning and say to ourselves, and they said in the research, probably the best time to infiltrate your mind with affirmations is when you wake up. Is right in the beginning of the morning when you wake up. To see your future, to see your day, to think about what's ahead, but to be very present in it, that you're willingly choosing to have these thoughts. Next slide. And lastly, this is one of my favorite ones. Remember, I said that to all of you <laughs> when you first sat down. I said, you're all unique beings, and you're already good enough because you're here right now. OK, next. These are more examples, but what I want to do is before we look at wrapping up, so I want all of you to actually write out your own affirmation that you're going to use for yourself, for your own life journey. And here's the thing, you don't necessarily have to share this with your partner, but before you start writing, I want you to, and I'll explain this in a second, I want you to actually do this first. I want you to think about yourself in a moment where you can remember that you were literally in what I would almost call your highest, you were at your highest good. You were in flow. Everything in your world was right. You, you felt courageous, you felt I don't know, powerful is kind of one of those words that's a trigger word for some people. So I like to say maybe you felt really confident or you felt really strong. And I want you to write down six words that would describe the qualities that you were taking on in that moment. Kindness, courage, compassion, love, you name it. Six words. Just in your notes where you've been writing qualities, attributes that you know you have and that you might even have forgotten about. These are ideally positive qualities, not judgmental qualities or discouraging qualities, positive qualities, okay? Because I want you thinking about what makes you unique. And then we're going to have every person here write out an affirmation. And here's the thing, for all the perfectionists in the room, this is your get started affirmation, okay? Like, I'm just going to get started. I'm just going to do this. Because I don't know already you're going to sit there and go, oh, no, oh, God, it's not going to be right. It's not. This is not about that right now, okay? This is just about you trying something that maybe, so, for some of you, this might be, oh, I know this. That's fine. And here's the thing that I want. I want you to think about what elements go into making an affirmation. The first is these are meant to be present tense, very now. Not, not about the past, not about the future, the now, today. That's why I asked you to go back and think a little bit about what got you here, but now you're here. And you've been here for X number of hours and you're gonna be here for one more talk after me, right? So be here, stay here, but you're writing in the present. So I will do X, I am going to. So I, th I wrote out, I'm gonna rock my speech, <laughs> right? So I'm, I'm, I am going to use language that describes the present moment. The second is, there must be words that have positive connotation. If we go back to the slide just before this one, you can take a quick look. You'll see that there are no words like can't, don't, 
won't. These are all positive. They're specific, which will be the next point. Okay? Keep the slide up. The next component, I think, was to be relevant and specific. So here's an idea. I think earlier, the panel, you guys got asked that question, like, what's a challenge you're sitting with right now that's kind of, you know, something you're dealing with? So one opportunity with affirmations is to actually pick a specific thing that you're dealing with, you're in the middle of right now in your life. That might be a challenge. That might be something that's even your awareness of it is, man, this is really a barrier. I, I am not getting through this. I work with a lot of clients. They're often in job search. So we talk about things like the challenges they face. They have to do well in an interview or something like that. So when you're writing an affirmation, you may also want to have a specific thing that you want to gear this affirmation towards so that you're actually going to create a positive statement that you can actually say and repeat this to yourself and write it down and maybe put some images up around you or even make a collage. I don't care, you know, vision boards are kind of cool. A lot of people do that, right? That's fine. But that helps too. And then can you just go back to the last slide again? When you write it and say it, it has to be said in a way where it is spoken as if it is factual and true. In my opinion, the way I interpret that is, is it doesn't, you don't give it life if you don't mean what you say, right? Can we go back to the examples, the last one? I believe in myself and trust my own wisdom. If I'm going to write an affirmation like that, I have to see it as if this is true. I truly believe in myself and I trust my wisdom so that when my radar goes up and I notice I'm doubting myself, I'm going to remember this. And it doesn't mean you're not going to still doubt yourself, but the intention here is to actually be strategically looking to combat the negative mindset by adapting and bringing in a new narrative. And that's what affirmations do. They bring us a new narrative. Now, earlier I asked you to look at your qualities and write some down. So one idea I had when I was putting this together was, what if you wrote an affirmation specifically for a particular quality that you want to see show up in you more often every day? Maybe you could think of a challenge you're facing. And if you had more of X, would that help you? So for example, when I work with people that are in job search, one thing that they often feel is a lack of confidence. So when we talk about affirmations, we might say, maybe it's, I am a confident, bright human being. I am valuable, and I am needed. This is just me kind of coming up with it. So take a few minutes. I want you to just write whatever it is that speaks to you right now. And know this, it is already good <laughs> even if you don't know that it is. You have to trust that. And if there's anyone who wants to volunteer and share theirs, of course we can, but there's no obligation. But what I'm a big believer of is I speak truth into being by saying it out loud. And if you really want to speak your truth into being, you have witnesses. And that's what all of you are. You're witnessing yourselves, and you're witnessing others. And there's power in witnessing. So again, I won't pressure, but if there is anyone that would like to share an affirmation that they wrote today that isn't too personal in a way that would make you feel uncomfortable, that would be great. So um, I can speak? No? Yes, you can. OK, I so, yeah. So um, thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. I really enjoyed that. And um, I would like to share my confirmation with everyone because I learned through my experiences and thanks to a person who is my mentor. He's one of the people I work with and he actually helped to shape my career. It's an older gent African-American gentleman and um, my best friend. And he taught me that when I was complaining a lot how hard life is and all of everything that um, it's never such a situation that it's perfect. It's, 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 uh, how, it's actually how we are um, 
shaping the situation. So basically, my um, confirmation is that I enjoy challenges no matter how hard and difficult they are. And that's what I would like to share with everyone because we wish and we strive for like the perfect job, perfect day, perfect situation, perfect family, perfect par partner, perfect money. It's not going to happen. And uh, we take the challenge and try to succeed and go further. Thank you. Thank you. Can we all give her a hand? Uh, so, so this is my uh, second year um, at the conference, and it was very insp inspirational and motivational uh, last year. So I, um, because of that, I wanted to have those emotions every day. Like, whatever everyone is feeling today, very ins inspired uh, by all the stories and everything else, I wanted to continue that. Uh, so I um, created a habit of uh, writing down the affirmations or positive thoughts every day. Uh, and it might be on the piece of paper. It doesn't have to. It could be a notebook or, or it could be a sticky note or anything else. Um, and uh, every day I try to remind myself that I'm confident, I'm compassionate, I, I'm a kind person, I impact other people. And uh, really, if I do it every morning, the day is much better. <laughs> so I and motivational boards and... Um, my daughter is not, she stepped away, but uh, really in front of our bed, we have an inspirational wall when we have pictures uh, and notes when we say we are kind, uh, we uh, step up, we um, inspire, and um, to waking up each morning to something like that, it helps a lot, being a better person and helping other people. Awesome, thank you so much. I am persistent, consistent, and patient, and that will lead to success. Say that again. I am persistent, consistent, and patient, and that will lead to success. Okay. And persistent, that one... consistent, patient. The patient part is the hard part. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you could just make a show of hands. Look at I look like a two-fisted. <laughs> um, how was that for you this morning? Yes. Okay. My objective today was to come and think of a gift that wasn't so much about me, but that you can give yourself literally every day when you're in a moment, when you're in the car, when you get that phone call from that person who's bugging you and you don't want to pick it up, you know, when your boss calls you in, when your coworker slacks off, when the person who admitted, committed to doing something doesn't show up. Be thoughtful, be aware of your thoughts. What are you thinking? You're gonna have the negative thought, I'm not telling you it's gonna stop, but can you intentionally choose, choose, as Louise Hay says in her quote, can you choose to insert a new narrative? And we can. We can do it anywhere, anytime, at any moment. That's the gift all of us have, and now you're aware of it, so go out there, and make it a great day, and don't leave, because there's one more panel, so you can't go yet, but thank you so much for this opportunity to talk again. I appreciate it, and I'm honored to encourage all of you. Bye.